everyone. So in my last video, I started deploying my new home network, but as much as I like my little desktop setup, especially with the little feet I used, it doesn't give me much freedom to expand the network. For that, I'd need a rack. So that's my mission in this video. But first, let's remove this Windows 10 watermark with today's video sponsor, SCD Key. They offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, so just head over there using the link in the description down below. If you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off. The key is delivered immediately, and then you can just search for Activate on your PC and input the code there. Click Activate and the watermark is gone. So back to the video. So I was tweeting about this Penalcom 12 Urac that I really like the look of, and the manufacturer reached out to me and offered me a discount on it, as well as offering to powder coat all of the accessories white so that they match the white rack. So a massive shout out to Penalcom for making this project possible. So I'm very excited to take a look at my Penalcom R6400 Series 12 Urac, which I went for in white, with the vented front panel instead of the windowed version, as I want my networking hardware to have as much natural air movement through the rack as possible. This is the shallower version of this rack, so it's better suited for networking equipment instead of server gear, but you can still get shallow server cases that'll fit, so that'll probably be a future build project. The rails are reversible, so you can choose between either using M6 screws or just using cage nuts. I found the M6 screws to be quite difficult to install though, and I had to use a lot of force to install them, so I'm planning on just using the cage nuts instead. There's two removable side panels, and these give you access to the panels that have been designed for cable management. The rack has mounts for three 120mm fans, and in the future I'll put some notches up here if additional cooling is needed. I did have an issue with the original door and the lock on my unit, I think it was damaged somehow in shipping, but I was swiftly sent a replacement door and the new one works flawlessly. Before I relocate this rack to my bedroom, I first have a few things to install which will be easy to do out here. Firstly, I've decided that this top rear hole is the best place for cables to enter and exit the rack, so I'm going to be installing a 1U brush panel here. It should not only make it look nicer, but should also protect the cables from any possible sharp corners. I didn't have the right screws for this, but some bolts and cage nuts did the job. Next, I've decided to move the rear rails forward so that they're more central. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do this, but I wanted to position my PDU towards the middle of the rack, and moving the rails allows me to do so. My power setup will evolve with time, but for now I'm using this 6 plug surge protected PDU. It was quite difficult to install, and I ended up taking a bit of paint off of the rails, but I managed to get it in in the end. With that in place, it's time to start filling the rack. In the first few, I'm going to be installing something that no project can be without. The RGB. <laughs> when I first saw this LED strip, I didn't think that it was long enough and that it would therefore give me uneven light, but it's surprisingly bright and gives off enough light for the entire empty rack. Next up, to cover the PDU but to still give me access to it, I'm going to be installing a 2U hinged panel. But mine is no ordinary 2U hinged panel, for a design has been UV printed onto it by Penalcom. This was something they offered to do for me and I thought it would be really cool, especially as you don't normally see this level of customization on a home network install. I came up with a design that matches the name of my home network, Mycelial. All of my PC builds have a flower or plant name, so inspired by both Star Trek's Mycelium network, and also the fact that Mycelium IRL is seen as the biological internet, I went with the name Mycelial, I think it works. <laughs> And I'm really happy with how this panel came out. It looks so cool. I really like it. <laughs> and with this installed, I can open it and get easy access to the power management area. Or, you know, I can close it and have everything looking nice and clean. And with it just below the lighting, it really pops. So I've now moved the rack to my bedroom, which is where it will be living for the foreseeable future. And you can see compared to my NAS and my previous setup, it's pretty big. But it does fit here quite nicely. So now to start installing the networking equipment. It took a lot of planning to come up with the best layout for everything, but in the end I decided to install my Ubiquiti UDM Pro first, because I like the idea of having the start of the network at the top of the rack and working my way down. Unfortunately, this is where I ran into a bit of a problem. These screws and washers are a little too large, and that means that my hinge panel no longer opens and closes. I decided to fix this by ordering some rack studs, as I've heard good things about them, but that meant waiting a couple of days for them to arrive. So I'm back and I swapped out the cage nuts for rack studs. Annoyingly, as I was doing this, I realised that I already owned a pot of M6 screws that had smaller heads, and that would therefore fix my issue. Installing these should be straightforward, 
First, you install the stud with the clip facing towards the inside of the rack. Then you take this little lock piece and push that into place. It can only fit one way. Then you're able to use the nut to secure your equipment. However, they weren't all straightforward. Sometimes I could get the stud in with a bit of force, but the fit was so tight that the only way to install the lock piece was to use a nut and compress it in. And with a few of them off camera, it took two pairs of pliers to get the stud in at all. I think what it is, is that the thickness of the paint on this rack results in the square holes being slightly smaller than standard. The next thing I'm going to install is this one new mesh cover panel. The reason for this is that I wanted to leave an empty one u spot for a potential future 10 gigabit ethernet upgrade, and I just thought that having something there would be better than leaving it empty. A 10 gig switch would be the next thing in the chain, so installing it directly under the UDM Pro makes sense to me. Under that, I'm installing a 24 port keystone patch panel. This allows me to install keystones, which basically allow you to install any ports that you desire. For my needs, I'm going with White Cat 6 RJ45 couplers. They'll allow me to run a long cable into the back of the panel and then have a short and tidy patch cable from the front and into my switch. The problem with keystones though is that they don't seem to be a very precise standard. And this means that you can run into compatibility problems like I have here. No amount of force will allow me to get these into place because the front of the keystone hits the back of the front panel rather than aligning with the hole. My solution has been to file a notch into the side where there's no metal contacts, so this won't affect the functionality at all, but this notch allows the keystone to sit just a little lower, which means it can make the pivot necessary to fit into the hole. I've only installed 10 keystones for now, but I'll come back later off camera and finish the rest. The reason for installing the keystone patch panel here is that it's a good central location for running patch cables from, especially if I do make that 10 gigabit switch upgrade, but importantly it should leave a lot of open air around my passively cooled PoE switch, which is what I'm installing next. I must say that once you've gone through the hassle of getting them installed, the rack studs do make installing equipment easier. The next thing I want to install is a couple of 2U shelves. Again, I went with mesh instead of solid panels, because I wanted to have as much passive ventilation wherever possible throughout the rack. There's a lot of my design here that isn't a very efficient use of space. I've used 3U at the top, just for lighting and power, and 4U at the bottom for storage. But this is just my initial install, and I can move things around if I need to reclaim space in the future. So I've just done some cable management off camera, and have all of my power cables arranged on the left side of the rack. I really need to buy some short cables to tidy this up. By connecting to the PDU like this though, I should be able to upgrade to a UPS easier in the future. I've also wired everything around my room to the back of the keystone patch panel. So it's now time for the front patch cables, and for that I've imported some from America. These are mono price Slim Run Cat 6A cables, and they're pink. <laughs> Although they were supposed to all arrive in the same light pink colour, but instead they seem to have two different shades of pink. This is poor from mono price. But thankfully, I actually like the mix of colours and may eventually buy some purple ones to add to the hue that I'm going for. But I really like these slim round cables. They're crazy thin and the same transparent blue connectors give them a retro feel. Sort of, you know, Game Boy cartridge-esque. I'll probably play around with these cables some more and get them perfected, but I think they look great. With that done and the network switched back on, I'm essentially back to exactly where I started, <laughs> except it's now all in a rack. But the exciting thing about this relocation is that from here on, I have the capacity for expansion and upgrades. So the first thing that I'm adding to my network is a pie hole. Without getting too technical, because I'm no networking expert, a pie hole acts as a network-wide ad blocker. So everything from PCs to phones to smart TVs will see the benefits of an ad blocker, including increased privacy, security, and even improved battery life. For my Pi Hole, I've gone for a 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, even though this is considered to be overkill for a Pi Hole. My reasoning for going with the Pi 4 is that I want to power my Pi Hole through power over Ethernet, so the Ethernet cable is also providing power. For that though, I need to upgrade my Pi Hole with a PoE hat. The one I've gone for is made by UC Tronics. I like how small this version is, and I've gone with the fanless variant, but there is a version with a fan available. I also purchased a small heatsink to install on the CPU. I've then added a 32GB microSD card, which I've already installed the Raspberry Pi OS onto. Altogether, this brings the cost of my Pi Hole to just over £60, but if you're interested in adding a Pi Hole to your network, you can do it for less than half of this amount if you go over Pi Zero and USB power. Before I get this Pi into a case, this is a great time to get the Pi Hole software installed. 
So I've plugged in a wireless USB keyboard and mouse, as well as a HDMI cable and an Ethernet cable. Thanks to it being PoE, I only need to run an Ethernet cable from my Switch, and the Pi immediately powers on. This isn't meant as a guide, but it's all really straightforward, and I've kept everything with the default suggested settings, as I can always go back and reconfigure it later. How it works is when something tries to access the internet, for example, a banner ad placement contacting its servers for an ad to deliver, it first reaches the Pi hole, where if it's on the blacklist, it will be blocked, but if it's not on the blacklist, it will be allowed through to your normal DNS provider and to its end destination. The technical term for this is a DNS sinkhole. Now that it's all set up, all I need to do is set the DNS server on my router to the IP address on the Pi Hole, and I've set Google's as the backup DNS. And then I can log into the admin panel of the Pi Hole and see how it's doing. From here, I can easily disable and re-enable it in order to run some comparison tests. So firstly, on my PC with no other ad block running, you can see what ads look like on speedtest.net. And then if I get the Pi Hole running, you can see that they've all gone. Where Pi-hole really excels though, first is just using an adblock browser plugin on your PC, is that it covers your entire network. So for example, if I load up a random phone game, then you can see there's no annoying banner advert on the screen thanks to the Pi-hole. Because my phone is getting older now, I've noticed ads and games will cause stuttering as they load in. They really do have an impact on your performance on an older device. It's not perfect and some ads get through, but I can always add to the blacklist if I want better coverage. The worst ads are the ones that cover gameplay elements, so even the placeholder ad text is an improvement over those. So now it's time to install my Pi Hole into the rack properly, and for that I need a case, and this is where things get really cool. I managed to get in touch with My Electronics, who are a small company based in Holland, and they've designed and manufactured a rack mount case for the Raspberry Pi, and My Electronics sent out their pro enclosure for me to take a look at and install into my setup. It's made out of black powder coated aluminium and fits four Raspberry Pis and a key stain for each, which for example can be used to add front panel HDMI ports. Around the back there's mounting locations for optional power supplies, but I won't be using those as I'm going PoE. There's also four 40mm fan mounts, and I think I'm potentially getting some noxious for here, but I want to see how it does passively first. I'm only using two of the four screws to install my Pi. I could remove the PoE hat and install the other two underneath as they would fit, but honestly, two screws is enough to keep such a small lightweight board in place. So with my Pi now installed into the enclosure, it's time to give it a friend and install a second one. I haven't decided what to use this second one for yet, but once I have, I'll add a third and a fourth Pi to the case. So I never really understood the whole home lab thing. Like, I get having an epic home network, but having networking gear purely to play with never really appealed to me personally. And yet here I am, <laughs> installing something before I've even decided what to use it for which is typical home lab behaviour if you ask me. Oh no, it's starting. <laughs> For this second Pi, as it isn't configured and there's no way to remote into it yet, I'm installing a HDMI keystone. In order to keep the cable tucked away, I decided to mount this in the fourth Pi slot. I then snapped off the little cover plates, put the cover back on and got it installed into the rack. I really like this Pi case, it looks great and gives me a lot of options for future upgrades, but it's definitely a luxury item as it's not cheap. I imagine though that the Raspberry Pi 5 will use the same screw mounts as the Pis before it, so I'll be able to continue to use this case for many years to come. I'm considering adding some final accents to it in the future though, to tie it more into the colour theme of the rest of the rack. Finally, the last thing for me to do in this video is to get the garage network deployed, and for this I'm going to be installing a switch and a wireless access point. So far I've got a cable that runs from the rack to a PoE injector, this then connects to a thick outdoor rated cable, which makes the journey to the garage and ends up here. What I've decided to do is run the thick cable to this. It's meant to be for surge protection, but I'm using it as a coupler to keep the install tidy. I know I'm mounting it incorrectly, and that as a result it sticks out at a strange angle, but this garage is mouldy and covered in spiders, so if it's not going to appear on camera in future videos, then I'm honestly not going to worry about it. From this, I'm running a more manageable cable to a switch, and for this, I'm using a Ubiquiti USW Flex, which is an outdoor rated gigabit switch, but also not only powered by PoE, but also provides PoE power to its four output ports. How much power you have to work with depends on how you power it, though. Running straight from the switch in my rack, it would have a 20 watt power budget. However, since I'll be running cameras from it in the future, I'm pairing it with a 60 watt PoE injector, which gives the switch a total power budget of 46 watts. And I've chosen this corner of the garage for it because it's right next to the area where I film, which means that I can run cables to a PC or test bench really easily. 
Finally, for the access point, I've gone with Ubiquiti UAP Flex HD, which is a really versatile form factor that has a range of mounting options, with tabletop, wall and pool mounts included, but with recessed ceiling mounts also available. This is the older Wi-Fi 5 version, as I've had it for a while now, but switching to the Wi-Fi 6 variant would be easy to do in the future if I need the upgrade. This is also outdoor rated, which is great because the garage is practically outside, so I never have to worry about this or the switch deteriorating out here long term. I could run a cable and have this mounted anywhere in the garage, but I've decided to keep it close to the switch because I think it would be cool to have a little networking area in the background of my B-roll. But more practically, this is the furthest away spot from my bedroom's access point, so I should cover the most ground in Wi-Fi with it here. After doing a bit of cable management with some cable clips, this is how the install looks, and I really like it. I do think it looks too nice to be out in the garage, if I'm honest. One of the cool little additions that this WAP has is the ability to customise the colour of the lighting ring on top, so I can have this match the pink and purple RGB lighting that I use out here when I'm filming, which should hopefully look really nice. So prior to installing this out here, I ran a speed test on my phone, where I was connected to the access point in my bedroom, which resulted in me getting a download speed of 41 megabits per second all the way out here in the garage. But now with the garage having its own access point, my connection is around 300 megabits per second. This is obviously a huge increase, but I suspect that my old Galaxy S7 Edge is the limiting factor here, and that if I had a newer device, I'd get an even more impressive result. So this is where I'm going to end this video. This was actually a ton of work and took me forever, which is why the channel has unfortunately been dead for a bit. But I'm really happy with my new rack setup, and I actually prefer it without the door on, which is kind of funny after waiting a week for a replacement one. It just, I love looking at it, it's so pretty. <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing my spare pie and filling the other two slots, and finally having a decent networking setup in my garage is so great. So please let me know what you think of everything in the comments below, and hopefully it won't be as long for my next upload. If you want to know what I'm actively working on, and also want to try and get me to upload more, there's a link in the description below to my Patreon, which now gives you access to my Discord, which I'm on every day and have been having a lot of fun with. So yeah, if you like this video, please hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. And thank you all for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>